The menthol tends to a lot of people that's just like Newport bootleg thing. That was the easy part. There's messages all through that shoot. It was just the perfect storm of people were ready to accept a shoe that wasn't one of the big boys. This sneaker is dedicated to the two brands that have taken the most and given the least. It was time. It was time. It was time. Here was this big company and their lawyers just drilling down on me. And they thought it was a global conspiracy. It was outrageous. What do you got? We want to know how many. We want proof. We think that there's 10 or 20 or 40,000 of these. Yeah, I kind of got bullied. It cost a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> Hello, microphone check, traffic Hello. check. We're on Canal Street. This is sort of the heart of the visual bootleg area of New York. If you've spent any time in New York, you've had to get something here at some point. Either if it's a foam mattress for your hurting granny's back or whether it's for your art school project. My name's Ari Foreman. Some people in Philly call me Ori. I'm a designer, graphic designer, and started working in the music industry doing logos, album covers, and in the last 19 years of my life has been experiential marketing. It's events, tours, pop-up stores, so it's the experience of marketing. Uh, we're looking at my dungeon. This is uh, where I keep not only my sneaker collection, the vast majority of it, uh, as well as a life of knickknacks. But the, the, the vast majority of what I have here is Nike stuff, and it's a full range. So these are, again, samples. It's not so much special. It's this all black, high top, Nike Air Force One with SWAT on the back, so it's the SWAT thing, but it has steel toe. I came up under my mom with this sort of idea of, hey, just make it and that really has been the catalyst of everything I do. So the creative process was always sort of there. As I was growing up, I was a skateboarder, very much into sneakers at that point. And then graffiti was sort of intertwined into all of that. Went to design school, um, just seemed like a natural progression. When my graphic design thing sort of led into doing On The Go magazine with uh, Steve Powers and Jimmy and Max, we had freedom. Um, with this, this is a sample of this colorway. Here is another pair of those. Salesman gets it in a Ziploc bag from Nike and it has this tag. So these two, I would assume, are this pair of shoes is one of one. This is the only one in the world. It's the salesman left and right with two different colored soles. Sneaker culture in, I guess, the early thousands. There was this moment where sneaker became culture. eBay had really shown up. Internet had shown up. Forums started to pop up, Nike talk, and it gave a window. It felt really special because it was still tiny. I have a, this is a bathing ape I got in 2003 in Japan. This one is pony hair. These are the, this is the style that said, hey, it doesn't have to be only Nike or Adidas. It can be something else, and guess what? It can be worth even more. A bathing ape. The brand started in 1993. Nego did something really significant. Nego seemed to be taking popular American culture um, and putting his brand spin on it. He was making these knockoff Air Force Ones, um, but he was using camouflage. He was doing things that were very hip hop, very street. And it really started to make you look at Nike like, why aren't you pushing these limits? That opened the door for other people to do their thing. And so here was this moment where I am got this marketing company. I had been working with Nike for years as a, as, a, as a client, and we really had a really great relationship. But creatively, these things just weren't happening. I was frustrated by clients who didn't understand the value of something like what Nego had done. I had been working with the tobacco industry. I had done 
some tobacco promo. I had done anti-tobacco and I wanted to make a case study. I wanted a piece of art that, yeah, I wanted to make a sneaker. I wanted to be campy and funny. And Nego opened that door. So the menthol 10, I had 252 made and that's because that's a sample run. I had a made in China and so I finally had that sample pair and it was a go. Move back a little bit for me. Thank you. Like, how much sleep did you even get? I had maybe like 30 minutes of sleep. Four. Four. When the word started to get around, I didn't know what that was going to be like. People were really into it. And I was, I was taken back. I'm gonna show you the menthol tents and talk you through them. Um, so, I like your classy Dwayne Reed bag. That's very, this is a very New York thing if you don't know New York. So this is in good shape. Sometimes I see boxes out there, they're just beat. And so I'm gonna compare that to um, this vintage classic Newport package here. I mean, it's a shame that what's in it is so poisonous, but man, this is a beautiful package design. So let me tell you a little bit about the box. Menthol 10's uh, general warning instead of general, Surgeon General's warning. General warning, get off the brand wagon. And that was just to say that you can get a brand that isn't part of this, this ruling class of brands, that there are smaller brands that can have a higher value and have much more to say and much more content but um, they are not considered. Uh, let's see. I think we get the. Uh, yeah, it's nice to hold these. It's you know the obvious parallels to the brand. We've got the green for the green in the ads, but this sort of um, aquamarine turquoisey kind of feeling is goes back to the old days. Patent leather, flat leather. This is a printed, so it's all there. Um, and you know, in the classic Air Force One silhouette, on the front tip of the Air Force One, it has little stars. And I don't, maybe some people notice that or not. This one has little money signs. For me, it was all about the detail. Everything about this had to have a purpose. So this insole, which is custom, is the part that looks like the filter, the cigarette filter. Inside this shoe, See that tag? This is sort of like the manufacturing tag. This sneaker is dedicated to the two brands that have taken the most and given the least. Thanks for the motiv motivation. Now it's our turn. And that was really to say that like we had been working with them in different capacities and different brands and had worked specifically on some footwear and we were saying that bigger and better things could be done and we're going to stand for that. If it means that we lose your love, you know, we've got to tell you what's on our minds. A lot of people came up to me saying that I was glorifying cigarettes. And yes, to a degree I am. But how else do you deliver a Trojan horse? You don't show up as the enemy. And I don't, I love Newport, but I despise cigarettes. And so this was a perfect Trojan horse to create that dialogue. For me, a family that was drug addicted, pills, alcohol, you know, caffeine, all kinds of things. T cigarettes were a lesser of evil, and they were all evil. And it was like, well, at least if my mom is smoking, maybe I'll have her for 40 years. If she keeps taking these pills and doing this alcohol, maybe I won't have her for very long. And it was a fucked up choice to have to think about. My mom, before she died, was, um, she was smoking holding her, she was on an oxygen tank and I'm trying to talk to her about her health and her life and she's pulling the oxygen tank off and smoking. You're not, you're not supposed to smoke near those things. Yeah, this glamorized smoking in only a way that it could to create a dialogue that other otherwise wouldn't have happened. If I just said, hey, be a conscious consumer. I don't think that would have worked quite so well. So in 2006, the sneaker comes out. I suspected that, there, that people would not be happy. And so I set myself up to protect myself as best I could. I mean, I just, you know, 
I was a little naive on that. So after the release, you know, within days, Nike gave me a cease and desist, which is, for those that don't know, it's this just sort of standard, cease what you're doing, stop it, don't make any more, don't do it anymore. Uh, and so I expected the same thing from Newport. They immediately came at me with more than a cease and desist. Yeah. <laughs> My secret attache. This is one of those things you get at uh, Staples, you know? Five dollars. That's about all I had left after that ordeal. So, it's perfect. Yeah, this is... Uh, so these are documents relating to the Menthol 10 project. Stuff from um, Newport's lawyers. Uh, a simple sort of cease and desist from Nike. Like I said, they were really cool about it. Um, I mean, there's an endless amount of paperwork here that's related to the Newport thing. So right here is Newport's initial letter that says infringement of Newport trade dress and Spinnaker logo. So if we just pan this over, here's the Spinnaker logo. Here's what Nike's saying that I'm using. And then here's, the, here's Newport. So this was my point. These corporations can create the demand and market this as a necessity if they want to. But they can't deny that there are certain um, ramifications of that, that there aren't certain moral dilemmas with that, just like anything. How do you hold yourself to a higher standard without only holding yourself to shareholders? The Menthol 10, for me, is a case study. It's disingenuous for them to act like some of the things that they're doing are sort of creating need. It must be the shoes. It's got to be the shoes. That's akin to tobacco marketing. Sure, it's not giving you cancer. But I'm saying that their, their ways of getting the money out of our pockets is similar in the marketing. Newport, they were like, what do you got? We want to see all documents. We want to see where that was manufactured. We want to know how many. We want proof. We don't believe you. We think that there's 10 or 20 or 40,000 of these. At this point, we're in an argument or I'm just being beaten up. I'm basically been tied, I've got the light on my eyes, and I'm just, where were you the night of the 27th? And they're just slapping me around. So what was the settlement? Can't use it, can't own it, can't own a digital picture of it, can't profit from it, can't talk about it, can't do anything, essentially. So you can see, like here's the amounts, me being charged for defense, which is uh, $11,275. And growing, and growing. And so, Part of the settlement said that I had to buy back the sneakers if they went under $250. And I had to give it to them to destroy. And I was giving it to interns. And I know, what do they, what do they destroy? Is there a sneaker shredder? No. So what did, what did they destroy? They just threw them in the trash. I guess two or three years in, they stopped responding to emails. They stopped responding to my reports. They stopped responding to my calls. They just disappeared. And so I then started just stacking things up and I was like, I guess I'll destroy them myself. I'll throw them out. I, I was just like, I guess, you know, it's over. I, I just don't know. And that's, that's kind of where it's at. That's why I've been talking about it. I figure we'll walk down to Stadium Goods, check out the folks over there. My sneaker was, it's more of a forced collaboration you know, that just wouldn't have happened. Sometimes you really just have to do something different and put it in a negative context in order to drive a very positive conversation. Yeah, I think this is an example of when the brand is open to their, their sort of iconic silhouettes and shapes and designs being torn apart, reconstructed in a way, really changed and, and this almost looks like a, a like a deconstructed bootleg in a way, in a in a in a positive way. It's it's fantastic. You know, to me, is really important about a brand relaxing and allowing things to happen. I, I am concerned to talk about it. People could take it as a warning. Don't play with tobacco in any sort of way. Legally, illegally, it doesn't really pay off any way that you look at it. Looking back on it, I would do it again. I would, a little differently. <laughs> I'd put some, a little more protection in place and stuff, but I, I think even more so I would have 
I would do it even more intensely. Knowing the type of dialogue it can create, I would do it again in a heartbeat. And who says I'm not?